But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, I don't really know that word, but I just called him that, yeah, JP, I'm going to call him JP for the rest of the day, uh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, the land we passed through to spy out is an exceeding good land. It's, it's good. Uh, if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. This is my favorite verse here. It says, only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of this land, for they are bread for us. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear do them. Not and rebel. All the In other words, keep moving forward. For the Lord is with you. Don't fear the people of this land, for they are bread for us. They are, they, they are, they, they are our bread. I want to speak to you just for a few minutes here today. Uh, and I want you to leave the meeting with, with every fiber of your being. Uh, this is bread for me. Mm. Can you right. tell your neighbor and say, this is bread this for me. This is bread for me. I wish I could give a, a subtopic as a hashtag this morning. Okay, okay. I would say this is bread for me. Hashtag, I eat those. <laughs> Can you put that somebody and tell them, I eat those? I eat those. <laughs> they were God's chosen people, right? And they were in slavery for so long. They were in slavery uh, to the Egyptians, and God got ready to snatch them out for purpose. That encourages me right there because it helps me to understand that whether I agree with God or not, or whether I am comfortable in slavery or not, or in bondage or in sin, when God gets ready to snatch me out for purpose, he does it by any means necessary. He'll raise somebody up, he'll sit somebody down, but he's going to snatch me out for purpose. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited this morning that he snatched me out. And I feel like God is in a place right now where he's getting ready to snatch somebody out this morning because you're in, a, you're in a place of transition whenever God starts telling you to move forward, right? So God raises up Moses and he says, Moses, I need you to go down there, you know, uh, free my people and take them into the promised land. Okay, he says, Moses, I need you to go down there, get my people, and take them to the promised land. Let me say it one more time. I need you to go out there, get my people, and take them to the promised land. So then my question was, God, where did the wilderness show up? Because you didn't promise me this. <laughs> you told me I was going from one place to a better place, not from one place to a worse place than a better place. <laughs> And I don't know about you, but sometimes when God tells me to move forward, it looks like I stepped into something that was worse. God, I would have been okay if you just didn't call me all the hell. I got to go through because you called me? <laughs> so it, 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 it kind of gets to me sometimes how God can take me from one place where it's not all good, but I'm comfortable. Some of us are there even now, and there's even people who, who I see, man, and it's like they have a lifestyle of just going to jail. Just, they just love bondage, and I never understood it <laughs> until I realized that as long as you're in there, you ain't got to pay no bills. You ain't got to worry about whether you're going to eat or not. You eat so they get comfortable because I'm in this place, and at least I'm not dying. <laughs> at least I'm getting taken care of. But God says, bondage is not where you're supposed to stay. Bondage is not where I'm going to keep you always. So when God gets ready, he goes and he snatches them out for purpose. So he has them out now and he introduces them into the wilderness. I just think it's God's process that when he, he transitions people, he takes them from that place and puts them in a worse place. And he does it for a specific reason. He's very strategic with everything he does. He doesn't do anything without there being a great purpose to it because he understands this. We've been taught that moving forward is not just a direction, right? We, we were taught that moving forward is also a position, right? So 
right. yes, it is a position, but it is not only a position. It is also a mindset. Right. Somebody yeah, say yeah, it's yeah. a mindset. It's a mindset. You must be a forward thinker if you're going to move forward. Because here it is, yes, it is, you know, sometimes it can be moving in a direction. Sometimes it can be a position, but it is also a mindset because I believe I can get a couple of witnesses here on this. It's because sometimes people can leave a place and go into a new position, but still have the old place in their mind. Say it, say it. So it does no good to take me out of bondage into the promised land if I'm still existing in bondage in my mind. If I'm still operating like a slave, if I'm still operating like I'm in bondage, if I'm still operating like, you know, I'm, I'm just still ghetto. <laughs> so I'm in a new place, but my old place hasn't come out of me. So God had to not only take the children of Israel out of Egypt to a new position, but he also had to take Egypt out of them before he could give them the final destination. So here it is that, that God is, is transitioning these people, and these people deal with something that sometimes we deal with, right? I took the liberty and the time to, you know, put on my doctor hat because <coughs> I wanted to diagnose a couple of, <laughs> of people here. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I went to <coughs> college to get my doctorate on Google University last week, and I was able to come up with this synopsis or with this di, di whatever it is, yeah, that's how long I was in class at Google, so, you know, I came up with a, a name for it, because I said, God, it has to be something out there that, that, I can, that I can help people understand where they got to get out of if they're going to move forward in this season, so he gave me a, a name for it, you ready? You ready? Yeah. You ready, shout. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. I love doing that. So, here it is. <coughs> These people are dealing with post-traumatic slave syndrome. That sounds so good. <laughs> dealing with post-traumatic slave syndrome. There, there goes the, the uh, you know, the definition, but I'm a I'm going to read it here, too, because, you know, my, my class in Google is short-lived, and I'm not going to help the people out this morning. <laughs> Come on here, you iPhone. You better be obedient to the voice of God. All right, so <laughs> post-traumatic <laughs> slave syndrome is the result. Listen, check this out. Post-traumatic slave syndrome is a result of multi-generational, that's important, maladaptive behaviors which originated as survival strategies that last long after the behaviors have lost their contextual effectiveness. All right, all right. I know right. you need me to break it down. That's what I'm here for. They are behaviors that you had to use to survive in slavery that you continue to use after they have lost say their contextual effectiveness, yeah. which means that you're free, but you're still acting like a slave. You're out of the relationship, but you're still acting like that's your boo. <laughs> God freed you from debt, but you're still acting like you ain't got no financial responsibility. If you're out of slavery, but you still have the behaviors. Come on, tell somebody beside you, you got to stop acting like that, Charlotte. <laughs> so listen, these people are physically in a new place, but still resorting to the same cast tactics as they had to as a slave. Take us to school, sir. Still see themselves as low and as small as a slave. As a matter of fact. God gives them a word to go check out the new land he's about to give them. They see giants in the land and come back talking about, in our own sight, we were as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Well, did you even ask them? <laughs> because had you asked them, that which looked bigger than you might actually be more afraid of you 
Not because of your physical statue, but because of what's in you. All right, all right. Did you ask them if they heard about how God dealt with Pharaoh who tried to come against you? Did you ask them about how God delivered you the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh time? You might realize that they know a little bit more about you than you're willing to accept yourself. All right, so, all right. Here they are. We came through. We went over there. They were, we looking like grasshoppers. <laughs> so we just hopped on out. <laughs> Talk about Joshua and Caleb real quick because I love them. I, and, and I want you to understand why it's so necessary to have a Joshua Caleb combo in your relationship circle. <laughs> It, it, it's very important to have a Joshua Caleb combo. Can y'all say that a Joshua Caleb combo? And I love, I, I love the, uh, I love the, the initials of Joshua Caleb because it's JC. It reminds me of Jesus Christ. It reminds me of my best friend. That when I really want to give up and nobody can really talk to me, JC shows up and says, "Chris, you better keep moving forward." When I really want to quit and really want to tell everybody how I really feel, JC shows up and says, "Dude, shut your mouth." When I already typed out my Facebook status and I'm about to hit post, and JC shows up and says, "Chris, if you don't delete that, you're about to erase your whole destiny out of one moment." I wish I had somebody up in here that would testify with your praise this morning and say there were some issues that JC had to get me out of because if he wouldn't have got me out of it, I would have got out of his plan. I would have got out of purpose. I would have forfeited my destiny. My character would have cost me everything. My response would have cost me everything. So I'm, I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I just get excited talking about JC. I was supposed to tell y'all about Joshua and Caleb, but JC... I get excited when JC shows up, but let's talk about Joshua and Caleb. Okay. This, this, this message here. Uh, Joshua, I love Joshua's name. It means Jehovah is salvation. Y'all got that? Joshua's name means Jehovah is salvation. All right? Caleb's name. Ooh. Caleb's name means dog. <laughs> it's important that you have a JC combo in your life because you're going to need somebody who when things start going down I'm saved but if you come between me and my destiny I'll cut you, I'll beat you down. I don't care how big you are how strong you look but if you let the dogs out this way I, I don't care how only you think I am. If you try to step in between the word that God gave me and where he's taking me in this season, the dog in me will show up. Where my dogs at in the house this morning? I don't hear, I don't hear y'all making no noise up in here. I, 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 I went through, I went through a, a situation I went through a situation not too long ago Went through a situation not too long ago. I was, it, was a, it was a sunny Saturday morning. Yes. It was a sunny Saturday morning. And I was feeling the joy of the Lord. You know, he was my strength. And he was my direction. He had delighted my footsteps and guided my path. And I was just feeling the glory of God this morning. I wanted to be very generous. So I grabbed a few students of Ignite. And I said, y'all, we're going to go wash some cars. So let's go wash some cars. Let's do a free car wash. Got out there. I'm just sharing the joy of the Lord. I was able to minister to somebody that morning. It was just a wonderful, wonderful day. And I was standing there and I was swinging my keys. And <laughs> something happened. My keys fell down the drain. And it was about, had to be a few feet uh, out of reach. And I looked down there and Immediately, I thought, hmm, I wonder how I'm going to get these keys out. Like, this is almost an impossible situation. I have some other Legos, Santa Claus build youth leaders who looked down and they said, Chris, you know, you, you should, you sh 
six when they made the car the city, y'all. Did you know when you think folks get you from this city, they get you from this folks when they pull up. <laughs> <laughs> and then a BMW drove up real fast. It, a truck drove up out of nowhere, and, and I had somebody jump out the truck named Miss Cheryl, and she jumped out and looked down the drain, and she said, oh, don't worry about this, I'll get those out. What do you say, Chris? Yeah, it's good to have some people that are trying to make the situation work for you, but then when you got that one that say, look, I, I put on my best clothes this morning, but I'm getting on hands and knees, but we're going to make this work. There's no impossibilities in God. There's no impossibilities in me. If, if, if it don't look like it's going to work, then look somewhere else, because when you turn back around, I gave up. I gave up. I was like, it ain't going to happen. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to sleep in my car tonight or or what? Like, because they ain't got no keys. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. But you gotta have one. What dog? What dog? You, you what gotta dog? have you a Caleb that says, look. <laughs> I know what it looked like to you, but it don't look the same to me. <laughs> I like the fact that, that Joshua and Caleb said, I know they look like giants to you, Come on, say it, say it, say it. Woo! Woo! I need those. I need that from one of my young people. You know, you know, guys, we, you know, we we entertain and have fun differently. Sometimes, sometimes we have to prove our, you know, physical masculinity. Sometimes, and sometimes, you know, some of my fellas they like to test and try to see, you know, how much I can take. So they'll punch me or hit me. I'm trying to, to make this sound good so y'all don't think I'm beating up y'all kids. It's only a few. It's only a few and I got permission from them family so I beat up. But <laughs> see I need you to raise your hand because Marquez anytime anytime I hit him back, he don't care how big I am, he don't care how swift the hit was, he looks at me and says, I eat those. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you got to have in this season. It don't matter how big that thing is, look like it's coming after you. When they try to swing at you, look back at that thing and say, you pray for me. I eat those. I eat those. So, so, so here it is now. <laughs> ten of the spies, ten of the people who are supposed to be leaders, ten of the people who are supposed to have faith, ten of the people who are supposed to know all that God can do with the didn't see anything. Can't bring that bag right there. They saw nothing but but an obstacle that they couldn't overcome. They saw nothing but something that they couldn't couldn't get through. But that's the reason why I said you gotta have you a JC combo because when they see the giant as something big, as something powerful, as something you can't overcome, when they see the giant as something that's gonna take you out if you move forward, when they see the giant as something that's gonna literally annihilate your your very being if you try to move forward. Forward. You need a JC combo that sees giants like this. <laughs> you need a Joshua Caleb combo that sees your giants like this. Who, who's going to run from this? Who's, who's going to give up on God for this? Who's going to quit for this? Who's going to complain for this? Who's going to mess around and go away for this? Who's going to rebel for this? Who's going to retreat for this? Somebody say, this is bread for This is what's stopping you. I had to get it because it's said giant for the slow one. I, I used to do it with you. Yes. <laughs> but, really? Ask your neighbor say, really? Are you really about to give up on your inheritance for a piece of bread? I eat those. I do. Because I'm going to take it home and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I eat those. I eat those. It reminded me of, of a time before smart before phones became smarter and people became dumber. <laughs> there used to be a game on there called Snake. And anytime there was an obstacle or, or or something standing in front of the snake, it didn't retreat and go down. Right, 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 right. It ate it. And the more it ate, the bigger it got. <laughs> 
the bigger it got. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I celebrate the fact that God puts a giant in front of me because one thing that tells me is that I'm actually standing in the promised land because only the people who stood in the promised land could even see the giants. So the very fact that you see a giant means that you're already standing in a place where God wants you to be. So keep moving 